What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and on today's video I'm going to be giving you a super handy tip for how you can actually run faster in your next marathon. Well actually how you can run faster in any of your upcoming races. And rather than keep you in suspense the answer is drafting. Run behind a person or ideally several people and you will run quite a bit faster. So I wanted to talk to you guys about this after I saw an article in Outside Online by Alex Hutchinson. Yep Alex Hutchinson has done it again dropped another gem and this article is titled drafting isn't just for elite marathoners which is good because you and I are not elite marathoners. If you are an elite marathoner, let me know in the comments. So clearly we know that drafting works. I mean, it is physics. Lower resistance means that we can just move forward faster or with less effort. In fact, this has been backed up by science, but until now, the science was from a one person study back in the 1970s. And that study was done in a wind tunnel and it found that someone can run about 6% quicker by drafting. And we see drafting in a lot of racing sports, but at least for me, most noticeably, it's at the big races when the front of the pack runners stick together we've got the Tour de France where they all take turns pulling and then of course we've got Kipchoge's breaking two attempts back in 2017 and 2019 and we saw a nice group of runners coming around in front of him and he was tucked into the pocket so clearly there is something to this drafting business and there is something to it because we have a recent study that was published in the Journal of Applied Physiology and this new study provides a missing link between two existing bodies of research. So previous studies have used computational fluid dynamics to calculate how much force the air exerts on you when you're running and it turns turns out that when you're running into still air at an elite marathon pace, a drag force of about 8 newtons is exerted. And when you run directly behind someone at that elite marathon pace, it drops the drag to about 4 newtons. And Alex points out that a medium sized apple weighs about 1 newton. So when you're not drafting, it's like you're being pulled backwards by a small bag of apples. We've then got another study that was done up in the University of BC that linked energy savings to running speeds. So in order to link those two studies, we need to know how much energy we exert when we're being pulled back by a small amount of weight. And of course, based on the previous research, that small amount of weight was 4 newtons and 8 newtons. So the recent study had participants run on a treadmill with a force plate and they were breathing into a mask so their energy consumption could be measured. And then behind them, they were connected to some rubber hosing, which was connected to some pulleys. And at the other end of that rubber hosing, the researchers hung a weight that exerts the desired force. And in the case of the study, it was 0, 4 and 8 newtons. So while it seems obvious that when we have more drag, we're going to exert more energy, we need to know exactly how much. The subjects all ran at 3 tests testing speeds between 8 and 6 minutes per mile and they found that energy consumption increased by about 6% for every increase of 1% of body weight in the force pulling them backwards. So to make this easier to visualize, think of Elliot Kipchoge running at 2 hour marathon pace with no paces. So he's got no one to block the wind. The drag force is 1.39% of his body weight, which means he is burning 7.8% more energy than he would with perfect drafting. Now you plug that number into Kipchoge's equation, and it turns out that perfect drafting would save him 6 minutes and 28 seconds over the course of a marathon. For Bridget Koski, who holds the women's world record for the marathon, her time savings would be 5 minutes and 58 seconds. That's absolutely huge. So remember I said that that study back in the 70s measured that drafting would save 6%? Well, it turns out that that was pretty spot on because the average energy cost in the new study Study was 6%. But here's the kicker. The new study had 12 participants and their energy cost ranged from 4.2% to 8.1%. And that means that some athletes pay twice as much in energy costs by running into the wind than others. Or to put it another way, some athletes benefit twice as much as others by drafting. Now, of course, that does raise a pretty big question. And the researchers actually looked at the participants' foot strikes on the force sensing treadmill and their horizontal braking forces and their forward propulsive forces as they were running. And they didn't find any individual biomechanical differences between the participants that benefited the most from drafting and those that benefited the least. So that's a pretty big question and it's not a question I'm going to be able to answer today but it seems like a good area for future research. Okay there is a small caveat to these energy savings from drafting and for Kipchoge to get that 6 minutes and 28 seconds quicker than he could without drafting it would have to be perfect drafting also known as running in a vacuum and that is highly unlikely to ever happen. But as you and I know perfection isn't the goal and through computational fluid dynamic studies we know that when a runner is running behind three other runners. So the subject is in the middle behind one runner and then we have two runners on the side. A runner running in that formation is going to have the drag force reduced by 57.3%. That's pretty big. And for Kipchoge, that would translate into a time savings of 3 minutes and 42 seconds. But get this, the most effective configuration for reducing drag for one runner is a seven person team shaped in an inverted arrow, which you may notice was very similar to what Kipchoge used in Vienna in 2019. And with that formation, the runner reduces the drag by 85%. 
5%, which is absolutely massive. And again, for Kipchoge, with that 85% reduction, that would save him 5 minutes and 29 seconds over the course of a marathon. So then Alex kind of reverses things, and we get Kipchoge's finishing time of 159.40. We add the 5 minutes and 29 seconds savings from running in that formation and saving 85% of the drag force, and we come up with a time of 2 hours and 5 minutes and 9 seconds, which on the surface isn't that impressive. I mean, it's impressive for me, it's impressive for you if we were to run that, but in reality, over 70 people have run a sub 205 marathon. But here's the thing that Alex points out. It's very unlikely that any of these athletes that have run a sub 205 have done so without drafting, at least in the first half of the race. So while these numbers may sound sensational, in reality, people are already doing it. So in reality, I don't want you to be disappointed if you're not saving five minutes on your marathon time, because the benefits will almost always be smaller than what the best case scenario is shown to be when we're studying something. Drafting position, and for you and I, when we're in a normal race, it's very hard to find someone running your exact pace and maintaining that pace for the course of a race and being able to stay right behind them, let alone having seven other runners surrounding you. But the point of this video is, is that any drafting is going to make a difference. So the next time you go out and you tow the start line, why not hang back just a little bit and use the benefits of drafting to run a faster time overall? Over the years, I have found that as a runner who is six feet seven, which I suppose is a little above average in height, I have found that on windy days, a lot of runners kind of pull in behind me and they let me break the wind. So I guess this height is both a blessing and a curse. A blessing because I get to reach things on the top shelf, a curse because there's really no one tall enough to block all the wind for me. But let's just drop some more likely numbers into the mix. So according to the study's calculations, a 5 foot 9 inch 145 pound person drafting behind a very simple three person formation, and I say very simple three person formation with a bit of jest. But if you could find three people to run behind and you are 5 feet 9 inches and weigh 145 pounds, you could save 3 minutes and 8 seconds on your marathon. That's pretty good. So of course, I want to hear from you guys. Have you ever used drafting in a race? Let me know how it went. And as far as my week of running, it went pretty well. I did go and see my orthopedic surgeon last week about my plantar fasciitis, and it turns out there's pretty much nothing I can do other than the stuff that I'm already doing. I was hoping to get a steroid injection, but apparently when you get a steroid injection in your plantar fascia, it weakens it a little bit, and then the plantar fascia is more prone to rupturing. And the doctor said because of my activity level, he certainly wouldn't recommend me having that treatment. As far as running goes, he did say that running aggravated to plantar fasciitis, but he also said that he sees no reason why I should stop. I think it's one of those self-regulating pain things. So for now, I'm just going to suck it up, run when I can, sleep in a boot, keep doing my toe yoga, and hope for the best. So let's talk about my week of running last week, and overall it was a pretty good week, but I have been noticing that I've been getting a little more fatigued than usual, and I think it's just cumulative fatigue, so we'll see how I deal with that over the next couple weeks. But started off on Monday with 7.6 miles, very easy. You all know how I love a nice easy run on Monday because Tuesday is a workout day, and this week was no exception. No, I've got to say, it wasn't a very long workout. I ran eight miles total, I warmed up for two miles, I did six 800 meter repeats with 400 meters recovery in between, and then I cooled down for a mile and a half. And Wednesday, I went out for 10 miles, very easy. Now, Wednesday's run was, it was a bit of a thing. I I definitely ran at an easy pace as far as my heart rate goes, but my perceived effort was quite a bit higher. And that could have been because of that cumulative fatigue that I was talking about. Could have been that it was just very warm. Perhaps I just didn't sleep well the night before. Who knows? But still got it done. Thursday I went out and I knocked out 11.1 .1 miles, but I broke it up into two different runs. If these runs were back to back, it was just two runs because I changed shoes halfway through. My first run was 7.1 miles with two miles to warm up and then five miles at tempo pace. I came home, put on another pair of shoes, I did one mile easy, two miles at tempo and then I cooled down for a mile before I got home. Pretty good run, though I gotta say that kind of took it out of me too. I was, I was looking forward to breakfast that day. Friday was a day off and even though I take a day off at least once a week I usually end up doing something else on a Friday, just not running. So it's a rest day from running. But this Friday because I was feeling just a little more tired than usual I really took it easy and took a serious rest day. And that fatigue that I was feeling over the last week actually pushed me in the right direction to make my plantar fasciitis feel better. So this may come as a surprise to some of you and it's so certainly came as a surprise to me, but later in the day on Friday, I decided, you know what? I'm gonna take a little extra time off. So I took the rest of the week off. I took Saturday and Sunday off, and not because of the fatigue, that was actually feeling a lot better by the end of Friday, but because of my plantar fasciitis, just to give it a little break. So I ended the week with 36.75 miles, which is about 59.14 kilometers. So all in all, pretty good week still. Honestly, I've got no complaints. Guys, thanks for staying all the way to the end of this video. Keep your fingers crossed for me, and hopefully this plantar fasciitis is going to, if not get better, maybe not get any worse. Be kind, be happy, run well. I'll see you in a couple of days. Thank you.